Hi, and welcome to That's Roddy Mysterious, a podcast of short tales about true mysteries. What happened to the Flannan Isles Lightkeepers? Who was responsible for the Gardner Museum heist? I'm not going to solve those mysteries, but they'll be interesting to learn about. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. Transcripts for all episodes can be found at thatsruddymysterious.wordpress.com. No apostrophe and no exclamation point. Today's tale is about Dan Cooper. It was a dreary day in Portland, Oregon, November 24th, 1971. A man in his mid-40s, about six feet tall and wearing a business suit, black tie, and white shirt, bought a one-way ticket bound for Seattle, Washington. He called himself Dan Cooper, and he paid $20 for that Northwest Orient Airline flight, flight number 305. Dan was seated and ordered a bourbon and soda while waiting for takeoff. The flight took off as scheduled at 2.05 p.m. Pacific time. Shortly after takeoff, Cooper handed a note to a flight attendant. Back in this day, it wasn't totally unheard of for single men traveling alone to give their numbers to flight attendants. So this one took the note and unceremoniously stuffed it in her pocket, ignoring it completely. Cooper directed her to pay notice. Miss, you'd better look at that note. I have a bomb. The note said that Cooper had a bomb. He opened his suitcase, showing her its contents. Inside, she saw massive wires, red sticks that resembled TNT, and a battery. Cooper told her to sit with him. Then Dan Cooper directed the flight attendant to dictate a note. The note demanded four parachutes and $200,000 in $20 bills. This equals roughly $1.2 million today. Cooper took back the original note he had handed the flight attendant. He then told the flight attendant to take the new note to the captain, which she did. The captain notified ground control in Seattle, and the flight then circled the airport for about two hours while law enforcement got the money and parachutes ready. Northwest Orient Airlines flight number 305 landed at the Seattle Tacoma Airport at 5:46 p.m. Pacific time. Dan Cooper let the 30 passengers off and had a flight attendant get the money in parachutes. He allowed everyone except two pilots, a flight engineer, and a flight attendant to leave. After refueling, the plane took off again. Dan Cooper ordered the pilot to fly to Mexico City. They were to fly under 10,000 feet and slower than 200 knots. They would have to refuel in Reno. Somewhere between Seattle and Reno, near Ariel, Washington, Dan Cooper jumped out of the back of the plane. It was around 8 p.m. when he made his escape. He carried with him the ransom money, but left behind his tie. The pilots landed safely, and Dan Cooper was never found. The FBI investigation into the hijacking of Northwest Orient Airlines Flight Number 305 began during the flight, as soon as the FBI knew a hijacking was taking place. And so began one of the longest and most exhaustive investigations in history. The FBI called the investigation NORJAC for Northwest Hijacking. The FBI believes that Cooper knew planes and the area well. They thought that maybe he had served in the military, possibly as a paratrooper. Later, however, they decided he was an inexperienced jumper because an experienced parachuter would know that the jump was too dangerous. The FBI interviewed hundreds of people. In the first five years, they had upwards of 800 suspects. Almost all of those suspects were eliminated. The FBI had DNA left behind on the tie that Dan Cooper had left behind on the plane so it was easy to eliminate suspects. For a time, the FBI thought the culprit may have been Richard Floyd McCoy. McCoy had been arrested for a similar hijacking and parachute escape several months after D.B. Cooper hijacked flight number 305. McCoy was later ruled out, though, because he didn't match the descriptions provided by the flight attendants, which matched pretty closely, and for other reasons. The FBI thinks Cooper may not have survived the jump from the plane. They said he was improperly dressed for a parachute jump. They also say the parachute that was provided couldn't be steered because they had sewed part of it shut. Finally, Cooper jumped into a heavily wooded area at night, which is an extremely dangerous jump. The money that he was given was also never spent. 
In 1980, a boy was playing in a riverbed about 20 miles away from Ariel, Washington. He uncovered a bag with about $5,800 inside. The serial numbers on those bills match the serial numbers on the bills given to Dan Cooper. Nothing else was ever found. No sign of Cooper, no sign of the rest of the money. The media gave Dan Cooper the name D.B. Cooper, apparently misunderstanding when the FBI reported that they had interviewed a man with the initials D.B. In 2016, the FBI closed the case, although they admit that they are still receiving tips and haven't figured out who Dan Cooper is. Who was Dan Cooper? What happened to all that money that he stole? What happened to him? What do you think? If you're listening on Spotify, scroll down and let me know what you think. Thanks for listening to today's episode of That's Ready Mysterious. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a review and follow That's Ready Mysterious to be updated about new episodes. Tune in next Tuesday for another thought-provoking tale.